Welcome to another episode of the Forgiven Nutritionist podcast. I'm your host, Wendy Brinkman, and today it is a solo episode. I'm going to be talking about the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. Recently, I heard someone tell um, myself, my husband, and quite a few other people that were here at this public forum that our health is declining and that our body is failing. And this person kept repeating this over and over again. I know that they said it at least two or three times, and they did say it with such passion and importance. And unfortunately, um, that may be true for some people. Um, However, your body can change. And let's talk about that for a little bit. Yes, your physical age the number that you are. For example, right now I'm 51. I cannot reverse that number no matter what I do. (laughs) I was born 51 years ago. That number will never get smaller. That number will only increase. However, your biological age, which is how your organs and your tissues and your cells act inside of your body, that number can actually uh, reverse and reduce. And there's lots of... uh, testing and things that you can actually do to see your biological age. Unfortunately, when you're told a story like this, that your body is failing or that your health is declining, when you're told a story like this, immediately your body triggers its sympathetic nervous system, which then causes a chain reaction in your body of stress. And all the things that happen are and this is just some of the things I should say, some of the things that happen is your food stops digesting. Your heart rate speeds up. Your bladder and bowels um, all of a sudden decide that it's going to store these things instead of releasing them. Your body expends a lot of energy because it it thinks it's literally running from a perceived tiger. Even your eyes aren't able to focus as well either because, again, your body and your organs and everything think it's running from a tiger. Chances are we are literally not getting chased by a tiger, but our organs and our body does not understand that. Our now stresses today or our tigers of today are are a text from our spouse because we're fighting with them or a family member. Um, It is the news that we constantly are bombarded with about wars or Uh, people starving or car accidents that have happened or 10 car pileups. Those are our tigers of today. So when this, your sympathetic nervous system kicks in, it's known as the fight or flight and it has a purpose. It's supposed to be there because yes, when you're running from a tiger or um, in a car accident and or swerving it to avoid a car accident, I should say, your body doesn't need to digest its food at that exact moment. It's doing things to literally keep you alive and keep you from that danger. So it's supposed to be doing exactly what it's doing. It's built and designed that way. However, on the opposite end, the parasympathetic nervous system is known as your rest and digest nervous system. This is when your heart rate is nice and slow, digestion happens, promotes relaxation and all the cells in your body. Your eyes even focus uh, more clearly so you're able to see and read better close up. This all stems in your vagus nerve. And your vagus nerve is uh, one of the longest nerves that stems from the bottom of the brain, um, in the back of the brain. It goes all the way down through the neck, in the chest, and into your lower abdomen. There are branches that branch out that branch out in and around your ears and all in and around your lungs, but it literally connects your brain to your gut, and it is responsible for, again, your heart rate, the food, how it moves through your digestive tract. It even helps with speech production. It regulates sweating and blood pressure and even your mood. It also helps your organs, uh, and the organs that it really uh, impacts are your heart, your lungs, your stomach, and your intestines. And they all signal back and forth to the brain and vice versa. That is what tells your organs to either stop working or start working. So you really want 
to always promote parasympathetic nervous system. I'm going to give you a couple things that you can do that will help stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system to keep all your organs functioning properly and keeping that rest and digest uh, system working well. So anytime you are told a story like your health is declining or your body is failing, I want you to maybe think about focusing on some of these things because this will help keep you in that rest and digest state. Breathing. This is the biggest one that I think is uh, entirely possible that uh, anyone can do immediately. Uh, And the first thing you need to do when you're breathing is breathe through your diaphragm. Unfortunately, a lot of people breathe through their chest Uh, Like when you go to the doctor and the doctor tells you to take a deep breath, a lot of people are breathing in through their chest, but you want to breathe in through your diaphragm and your diaphragm is under your rib cage, a lot closer to your stomach. And so you want to make sure that when you are breathing, a lot of people talk about belly breathing. You want to make sure that your belly expands out and in and out and in. You don't want your chest to go in and out. You want your belly to go in and out. One thing you can try to do is maybe put your hands on your chest and pretend like, this may sound weird, but pretend like you're not able to move your chest. So if you have to think about a rock sitting on it or not, that may help you to force, okay, if if a rock was sitting on my chest, how would I breathe? And then you just slowly start practicing breathing through your belly and expand it out and expand it in and just keep practicing that. This is how babies breathe, and this is how we are meant and designed to breathe. Uh, Unfortunately, we start slowly breathing through our chest, and then this activates the sympathetic nervous system instead of the parasympathetic nervous system. So focus on breathing through your diaphragm. When you're doing that, make sure you're breathing in and out through your nose. That's going to give you the biggest amount of oxygen, not just air, but actual oxygen going in and out to your brain, as well as all of the cells in your body and organs. So that's going to make your body and brain function a whole lot better also. The next thing you can do is yoga. Um, I know that sometimes when you're sitting someplace, you can't always do yoga at that moment, uh, but You can do that when you get back home. It does not take really any time. You don't have to spend hours even doing yoga. You can do yoga in a chair, but it definitely helps with breath control and gentle movements, which also helps help to stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system. All of these things that I'm kind of telling you also can be free. Another thing that helps with uh, stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system is exercise. This may actually sound a little contradictory because you are thinking that you should be resting, but sometimes exercise can really actually help with rest. The thing you want to think about though, is a lot of people like to do um, the HIIT workouts or high intensity interval training. Those are not the types of exercises you want to do. Maybe just going for a walk, uh, even if it's on a treadmill in your backyard, walk around your house if you can't go outdoors for some reason. Uh, My husband and I were recently at a mall, which yes, I can't believe a shopping mall, but we were there and there were a lot of people walking around and yes, they were actually shopping, but there was a lot of people still doing the mall walking thing. So that's some, another place to go, no matter what time of year it is. And that's great exercise for you, no matter what. And it can really lower your blood sugars, which again is also, um, contributing to some of the, the sympathetic nervous system. So you really want to work on exercise, which is definitely going to lower those blood sugars, and it's going to activate that parasympathetic nervous system. Again, the parasympathetic nervous system is that rest and digest. So, so far we've got breathing, yoga, and exercise. One thing that really helps your parasympathetic nervous system is sleeping. And I'm not just talking naps. I'm talking seven to nine hours of continuous sleep every day. If you're waking up constantly in the middle of the night, that's another podcast episode and we can definitely work on that, but really start to try to focus on getting seven to nine continuous hours of sleep every day if possible. Your body goes through a car wash every day and it needs to detoxify and regenerate new cells 
And that all happens in that seven to nine continuous hours. So really work on getting that seven to nine hours of sleep. And hydration is also very key for activating and stimulating your parasympathetic nervous system. Now, when I say hydration, I am not talking about coffee. I'm not talking about soda or any just drink in general. I'm talking about actual water. So try to focus on getting the proper amount of water. This may be shocking for people, but the eight classes of day is actually no longer what's usually recommended. What's now recommended is half your body weight in water in ounces per day. However, I would put a little caveat to that as well. Let's say you weigh 300 pounds. I think 150 ounces of water is too much because uh, you, you can get too much water. So I would focus on getting 100 ounces of water a day. Let's say you weigh 300 pounds. Let's focus on just getting 100 ounces of water a day. And I know that sometimes that's going to really sound uh, crazy, but if you start off early in the day and then as the day progresses, obviously drink less and less, uh, but focus on getting that full proper amount of water throughout the day that you'd be surprised at how such a simple, again, free thing can really make a huge difference in, in your overall health, but definitely in stimulating that parasympathetic nervous system. Laughter is another great way to stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system. Sometimes when you receive some bad news, um, it's not always easy to find the joy in those moments. Uh, sometimes it's difficult to always find laughter, uh, but laughter, even if you fake it, it actually does stimulate that parasympathetic nervous system. So try to, there's plenty of clips out there on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook. So if you really must uh, still focus on those uh, outlets, I definitely would look up some uh, laughters or com laughter or comedians or just funny jokes uh, because laughter stimul is, again, such a simple free thing that you can help to stimulate that parasympathetic nervous system. I don't know if you've ever heard of grounding, but grounding is another way to stimulate, stimulate that parasympathetic nervous system. Recently, we've had a boom of extra warm weather here in January in Wisconsin, as well as into February. And the perfect way to do grounding is to get your bare feet on the ground outside. Your body literally is removing negative electrons from your body and moving them back into the earth. And the earth is taking their positive electrons and putting them into your body. And so doing this is such a huge thing for your overall health. And you'd be surprised, especially those for that have high blood pressure. This is one thing that's quite often recommended or suggested to those with high blood pressure because grounding really helps. And high blood pressure is one of those things that happens when your sympathetic nervous system kicks in. So anytime you receive any kind of bad news or hear a story, if you do the grounding, that's definitely going to help you um, stimulate that parasympathetic nervous system and re increase that relaxation and that rest and digest. So let's go over our list again before I get to the final thing. You've got breathing, yoga, exercise, sleep, hydration, grounding, and laughter. And now the last one is diet. This is the one that people usually don't like to talk about. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's very critical and very important. Your body literally needs protein, vegetable carbs, and healthy fats at every meal. This will help stabilize blood sugars, which then in turn helps stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system. When we were told that day that our health is declining and our body is failing, a lot of people are able to not think about that two hours later. However, some people, when they're told a story like that, it stimulates that sympathetic nervous system, and it really holds on in their body and in their brain for a very long time, for days and even weeks sometime. I will say that when we were told that story, um, I um, unfortunately held on to that 
but mainly because I knew what it was going to do to people that heard this. And I noticed that uh, a few days after that, there was some, some talk in a forum also after the fact, you know, where people were chiming in their, their questions and comments and concerns. And the number one thing that I saw in this forum afterwards was everyone was then turning and focusing on their health and um, how they needed help or thoughts or prayers or anything for their declining health and their body that was failing. And that, again, told me that that was a huge story that was told to a lot of people. And like I said, some people are able to work through that and get their body back into that parasympathetic nervous state, and some people are not. And so we really want to try to minimize as many stories that we are told. Unfortunately, what is going to happen is your health will decline and your body will start failing. But the beautiful thing about the body is that the body is designed to keep you alive and it is constantly working to do its best to get you back to getting well. So it can only do good if you give it good. So the more you feed your body, not just physically with food, but mentally and spiritually as well, anytime you feed your body, as long as you're feeding it with good quality, positive, wonderful things, of course you're going to get a much better, healthier, happier, calmer result. And another beautiful thing about the, the body is that God made it. And not only can the body heal and the, he designed it to heal, but God can heal. So I don't want you to forget that part as well. And at the end of every episode, I always have a don't miss this moment. And for me, that's my don't miss this moment is not only can the body heal. Personally, I can't heal your body. Your doctor can't heal your body, but God can heal your body. God made your body so that it can heal. He knows what he did when he made the body and he made it beautifully and everything works like this beautiful symphony and orchestra when it all just flows together. That is how the body works. And if one system fails, all of them slowly start to fail. But yet at the same time, when one system starts to heal, it has a ripple effect and all the other systems slowly start to heal and do better. So try to remember that and focus on that. If that's your one takeaway from this episode, my don't miss this moment is that not only can your body heal, but God can heal your body. So try to minimize the stories that you are told and make your own story and make your story about how your body is going to heal. And watch how your body will improve. I can't wait to see you next time on the next episode of the Forgiven Nutritionist podcast. I don't know if you've heard about Metabolic Daily, but here are what two of my clients recently told me. My cravings have decreased and I feel so much better. I'm finally able to manage my weight. I no longer crave sugar and sweets and my blood sugar levels have been stable. Metabolic Daily naturally replenishes your gut microbiome and supports healthy weight because it helps your body do more with the good food you eat. It supports butyrate and GLP-1. GLP-1 is a hormone produced in the gut that helps reduce appetite, releases insulin, and controls blood sugar. Butyrate is a short-chain fatty acid that helps with blood sugar response, gut permeability, and immune function. Unlock an exclusive 20% discount on your first month's membership by entering my unique code when you click on the link tree link in the show notes. If you are looking for a trustworthy place to choose all of your supplements, Fullscript has 285 different brands to choose from. They did the work for you to check quality standards for all the supplements they carry. These standards are important because they help to ensure a product is safe, effective, and accurately labeled. Fullscript uses third-party companies to provide unbiased assurance that certain quality criteria are met when they add a company or product to their inventory. When you set up an account with Fullscript, use my link and you'll always get 15% off your supplements. If you want to continue learning and hearing all things nutrition for your mind, body, and spirit, click like, subscribe, or favorite me on whatever podcast platform you use. Or you can find me at ForgivenNutritionist.com.
This podcast was designed to educate, inspire, and empower you to achieve your health and wellness goals with your current healthcare provider. It is not meant to diagnose or treat any illness or medical condition or take the place of any treatments from your current healthcare providers.